and Muslims enemies? Are the Muslims and the Jews, are they not enemies? Why are they enemies? Oh, why are they enemies? Yes, thank you for your question. Now, we as Muslims and Jews, or Muslims and Christians, or Muslims and Hindus, we are not enemies to one another. But we are at war. The Jews and the Muslims are at war. What are they fighting about? They are fighting for a piece of land called Palestine. My brothers, the Arabs, they say Palestine belongs to them. My cousins, the Jews, they say Palestine belongs to them. It's a battle for the land. You have between brothers and brothers. Brother, they are all, you know, among us especially. Father dies, and you find that this estate can't be settled. They must go to court. They must go to court. You know, the, the dividing the shares, the inheritance. There's a war after war. Every Indian, I'm talking about the Muslims. You see, I don't know about the Hindus so much. But I know my own people. You have to go to court. You have to go to court. So, this is brother and brother. We are brothers and cousins now. And both are claiming the same piece of land. What are the rights and wrongs of it? You say, now that is something that we can discuss. We can talk. For example, I'm talking to the Jews. I say, come, come and talk to me. I'm talking to the Jews. I've spoken to them at the University of Cape Town. I've spoken to them here at the Natal University. I have had so many discussions with them. I have written a book, Arabs and Israel, Conflict or Conciliation. And I send it to every influential Jew in the country, in South Africa. The reaction was, <laughs> they want to kill me, they want to bomb me. I said, come, come, <laughs> talk to him. So I got it all recorded, you know, when they phone up and they use abusive language and what they're going to do to me and all that. I said, come and talk. Because my book says, call them, call people to a dialogue. Come, let us talk. See if you can see reason. So it is not Muslim want to kill Jews or Jews wanting to kill Muslims. Because we have lived together, Muslim and the Jews, for over a thousand years, no problem. You see, in Spain, the Muslims ruled Spain for 800 years. And the Jews were the second highest in the hierarchy, doing work among the Muslims. The, the greatest achievement of the Jews was by the Jews in Spain and the Muslim rule. And for a thousand years, when the Christians were persecuting the Jews, and when they ran, for shelter, protection, refuge, they went to Muslim lands. And every Muslim country accepted them with open arms. Say, ahlan wa sahlan. It's a family and plain. You know, come and live among us. We are the children of the same father, Abraham. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. You are the children of Isaac. We are the children of Ishmael. As such, we are brothers. Come, live together. And they lived for a thousand years. Not a single right against the Jews. Not a single... Nothing. The only time the problem started was with Palestine. When the Jews, they went to seek shelter there, and they went, and they went, and they filled up, and then they said, now we will take over. For the first time, the Muslim wakes up to the reality. He says, now everything, this guy is going to take it over. Inch by inch, inch by inch, the guy's got in. Now he's got the backing of the Western nations, and he's technologically he's more advanced than the poor Palestinians illiterate, ignorant people, and he says, now these are easy meat for them. So now they wake up, he says, no man, this is not right. So this conflict from 1918 onwards, prior to that, no problems between the Muslims and the Jews. Any other question? Yes, my son. Well, as the words say, satanic. The guy is satanic. The guy who wrote the satanic verses is satanic. You see, the trouble is that bulk of the people, nobody has really read the book. In the Royal Albert Hall, I went and spoke about that book of Rushdie. 6,000 people. And I made the chairman to read the introduction. There's a poetic introduction, a quotation by uh, Daniel Defoe, you know, some literary man. His quotation about the devil. So I made the chairman to read it from the satanic verses. And the chairman read it and is asking 6,000 people, anybody at any time has read this? You know, that, or you have seen it anywhere? Have you read anywhere? Out of 6,000 people, one guy put up his hand. Where? In the satanic verses. Then I'm asking the people, 
the audience. I said, you see, Rushdie has something special to tell about you, you Londoners. I said, you know, on the very first page, he calls you all bastards. You Londoners are all bastards. Do you know that? No. I said, Londoners, I said, you, whether you are an English Londoner, or a Pakistani Londoner, or a Sikh Londoner, or a Hindu Londoner, you are a Londoner, you are a bastard. <laughs> Shocked. Shocked. I said, I said, look, what have you been reading? You say this book is very good. I said, come on, come on, talk to me. Then, of course, it was a, more than an hour's talk. I'm giving you what he says about Rama, what he says about Sita. Did you read it? He says, no. I said, you will want to kill him, you. What is about you white people? The whole white race is this white women. No mind. Fat, Jewish, or non differential. White women, I can't say. There are other words. What, I, what they are good for. I can't. But I said, now you talk to me. You want to know? I said, you white men, you know what he says about your mother, your wife, your sister, your daughter, you Jew? You know what he says about your mother, your wife, your sister? I want to know what are your reactions. When this is what he says about Rama and Sita. This is what he says about all of your whole white race. And on and on and on. The filthiest, dirtiest book in my life I ever came across was the satanic verses. Really satanic. Keep away from it. From the price point of view, at one time it was costing 15 pounds. That's 75 rands. You only waste 75 rands on that? Hmm? It's about 540 pages. 75 rands. Here I'm giving you, my son, 2,000 pages free of charge. 